Behind me is the all-new Suzuki Swift. And we haven't heard from Suzuki lately, not that much actually. Now they're back here with the new generation of the Swift and it has always been a very likable vehicle. It has a large fan base because the Swift is small, affordable and always has, you know, something special. For example, also in the design and here the new generation has this larger front grille. Here also blacked out in the Comfort Plus trim also with the shiny black accentuations you can see in detail and you can already see here here's the radar sensor upgraded assistant systems and we'll tell you all about it you need to know here is thomas now to fill 4k full screen full length let's go also with the new logo stamped in here so it went up from the grill on top of here by the way here you can see this large gap here large panel gap in the front hood but they're telling me that this is like a pre-production prototype and this is supposed to be then slimmer for the final version led headlamps the main unit underneath we can also see the daytime running light so overall a little bit more grown up in the look in the front burning red is this really striking red color yeah pretty much like it because i like vehicles that really tell hey i'm a true color and not some you know where they ah is it black or is it green or is it blue this is a true red color definitely wheels would start 15 inch steel but these here are the 16 inch aluminum so it's also then the upgraded one the length here of the new generation 386 in meters or 152 inches is more or less the same than before so just a little bit longer but a very interesting change is before, here for this five door here, the rear door handles were integrated right here. Actually a quite clever solution and it looked like a three door, but some people actually, you know, <laughs> were mistaken and thought, ah, I'm not buying a three door vehicle. And so that's actually the reason they say like, hey, we want to make it more obvious again that this is a five door. And so they put the handle <laughs> right back here again. The roof here in vehicle color and that creates this flying roof effect you can see here black 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 also abc pillar there you know you see it's kind of flying but you can also get it as a black contrasting roof or also as a gray contrasting roof depending on the color or then here i would always prefer just the very vehicle color i like the new tail lamps they are more three-dimensional in a way and it's also pretty cool how and they can dissolve to the outside. In general, Suzuki is known for building lightweight vehicles. This one here has gained in weight because upgraded assistance systems. Also more dampening is used, so we can expect it to be more silent while driving. That boosts the weight a little bit, so 90 kilograms more than before, but still just around one ton. And although it's a small vehicle, usually small vehicles even are way heavier nowadays. Also a very clean design in lower part, no fake exhaust graphics at all. The rear exhaust here is underneath, hidden, so actually well done, I think. And hmm, hybrid, what does that mean? It's because Suzuki is now using a mild hybrid system, 1.2 liter three cylinder, naturally aspirated, where do we find that nowadays? It's also giving you a special natural feeling in the driving fun. 83 horsepower, front wheel drive, and then you can pick between a five-speed manual or a CVT automatic. You can, however, just with the manual gearbox, get an all-wheel drive version. Then 50% of the power maximum is sent to the rear wheels, you know, if you live in some bad road situation, country, and so on. So that is at least still possible, just that you cannot get all-wheel drive with automatic. That combination is not possible. More things we can expect from driving. First of all, better aerodynamics. Probably you can also see that. And also less rolling resistance with the tires and the wheels that are being used. Both together with the mild hybrid system supposed to give you better fuel efficiency. And then the all-wheel drive version will be 1.5 centimeter higher if you pick that one. Of course, this makes sense in this, you know, package together then. Turning indicators in the rear, just the bulb though. And also in the front, yeah not as cool as the daytime running light. This is the key fob, simple, but you know, I like it. So good quality and also really small. Then here, well, there's the keyless entry button, door closing sound. It's actually very solid, uh, I like that. Let's try again. Yeah, it's actually very good door closing sound. Inside of the doors, this is hard pack material in this higher trim and let me give you some light so in the higher trim you also have this bright insert and this has this kind of inside structure it looks pretty cool it is hard pack yes 
but this structure here makes it a little bit better actually then you have fabric here also for your elbow could be maybe a little bit um, softer also just plain plastic here on the inside of the doors and let's take a look at the interior what do we get for the price here of the vehicle so this then here the steering wheel base would be pu in the higher trim it is animal skin you have some hotkeys for the phone here still manual buttons for example for the volume right side to control the adaptive cruise control which is also standard so yeah i mean some other uh, premium manufacturers could maybe take an example for that, for this standard equipment. That's very interesting. Seats, always a fabric, and you get plain black fabric seats. Or then also these here with, you know, a little bit more work for the contrast stitches and this slightly gray nose, for example. Actually quite cool. Let's see about the comfort. There we go. The entry here, the side bolsters, they are actually quite soft. So, um... Let's see how that works over time, but of course in a way it's good because it also gives way when you're a little bit wider. But the comfort on the seats are actually quite decent. But what about tall adults? First of all, headroom. Then with 189, 6 for 2, I still have a lot of headroom left actually, so astonishing. And the only thing is that you can see here how my knees are being bent. So this is not the most ideal position probably for tall drivers. However, you can also work a little bit with pumping the seat up. Then it also goes a little bit forward like this, so you can find your ideal position and have space above my head, as I said. The steering wheel also, and see a standard up and down and in and out, both possible. Just this mechanism here at some point then you know it's smooth actually the mechanism itself just when you uh, you know touch the top and or lower part then you feel at some point they have to go for cost saving or to keep it reasonable remember they want to keep the price at around 20,000 euros like a you know german market price and that is quite astonishing what kind of standard equipment we get for that there are quite some decent details here in this vehicle also considering the price however I found one flaw here, which is quite, you know, surprising when it happens. Just listen to the sound when I use the window lever now. <laughs> like, you, bang, you know, like you almost feel that the whole car is falling apart by that. Yeah, but there are still some cool features here. For example, that we have this structured element also once again here in the dash. And this is the cockpit overview for you. This bezel here is actually quite large. I think that could have been integrated in a smaller way. Nine inch screen, however, standard. That's cool. You still have this control here on the screen. Yeah, and also with the beeping sound. However, um, we can also try to find a way to deactivate it actually here. Display settings maybe. Not really. Um, you can have the day and night control. We leave it on day. Maybe the volume settings. Then you can also see ringtone volume, voice coordination volume, uh, beep. Ah, and the beep is gone. That's better, right? Yeah, soon more to the infotainment system. Here, the steering wheel overview, once again, good, reachable, all the different knobs. Also here, for example, for the lane keeping assist in the lower part, zoom out to the instruments, air vents right here, and there's still a manual climate unit, warmer, activated warmer and colder on the right side here the fan speed the base fan speed is already quite loud i have to say but some do like it it depends on the market for example the northern american market always wants a notable fan speed whereas the european market wants it to be super silent you do have a car internal gps it is not the most responsive one though, as you might see. So most of the time you will use Apple CarPlay Android Auto standard wired or wireless. Here in this case, you can see the wireless integration. So that's also well done. In the lower part, you put your smartphone here, but yeah, it's kind of like flying around because there's no felt covering or something. Then USB A charger, another USB A charger you can get, USB C, you can also then play around with these. <laughs> and there's the 12 volt power supply and the cup holders here are also not adaptive what we also have here in the higher trim is seat heating and also with this satisfying manual button listen to that oh look at that the instruments analog stuff still haven't seen that lately also right side the speed in the middle part then the digital stuff by the way these warning messages here or these symbols is because it is attached to a cable with the battery here in the studio where else can we see that this is only 20k 
Yeah, for example, no dampening of the glove box. At some point, you have to save something then, if that would be important to you. Rear doors, by the way, also hard pack and door closing sound here in the rear. Even that is solid, so kudos to that. And remember, this is a tiny vehicle lengthwise, and I can still sit here as a tall adult. And this is also, you know, one of the typical Suzuki things. You always have good, you know, like exterior, interior space dimensions. Then also headroom wise, I can really sit here as a tall adult. It's just, you know, I have to put my knees a little bit to the X, to the outside here, then I could also drive there in the front end. It even has a registration here for the middle seat, so and it is somewhat possible, I would say. Yeah, of course, when with the knees it gets uh, really close, but headroom-wise, it's also possible then to sit here with uh, three guys in the rear. Other than that, there's nothing to fold down or something. The middle console here has also a rear cup holder. Sometimes I have strange gadgets in my hand. There's a light because the trunk or the boot is to follow 265 liters. Yeah, it's no big change if you compare it before, but let's take a look here. Now we have <laughs> good visibility. It's a meter of 40 inches in width, and the length is here about 66 centimeters, 26 inches actually. Then we can, of course, fold the seats. We can also grab over here because it's a small vehicle. One third, two third split, and there we go. You have the step then here, but then also the, the height is being used. And now tune in to more of our reviews of affordable cars.